Hey, how's everyone doing? This is Awesome Fellas Mechanics, and on today's video, I got this 96 Ford Ranger right behind me. So the issue with this Ford Ranger has a parasitic draw. So what we're gonna do on today's video, we're gonna use different methods to see if we can find the draw and try to see if we can get this vehicle back on the road. All right, so in this vehicle, we're gonna be using three different methods that we have right here. The first method that we're gonna use is gonna be using this low amp clamp here. And on this one, we're just gonna be hooking it up to the battery cable to read the amp draw on that. After that, we have this multimeter right here. I'm pretty sure you remember this in a couple of videos. We're just gonna set this up to that 10 amp scale, and then we're gonna hook this up to series to the vehicle, and then we're gonna see what we find there. And then the last one that we have right here is gonna be using this various. It's gonna be a multimeter as well. And we're gonna be going to each fuse on there, and we're gonna go and between each leg and see if there's a voltage drop. After that, we're gonna to go to this conversion table to see what volt, uh, what amp draw we have there. So let's see what we find out, see which method is gonna be best, and let's see what we get. So first method that we're gonna have right here, we're gonna be using this low amp clamp. This is a snap-on low amp clamp. You don't have to get exactly a snap-on. You can do any other or use any other one. All right, check this out and I have this set up to 10 amp scale. If we move this down to see exactly what we get, we're about 5.1 amps. That is a large amp draw right now. Customer did tell me that, and this, uh, if he had this sitting for about three hours, battery was dead. So we can just show you right here, I'm gonna disconnect this amp clamp just for a quick second so you can see the drop. All right. And Let's hook this back on so we can get read our draw again. There you go. And that's as simple as like uh, uh, hooking up the, the amp clamp and taking it off. And that's what we have right here. So we're at 5.10 amps, and that's a large amp draw. Now let's go to the next method right here. And we're going to go ahead and check that out. All right, so our next method that we're going to be using is going to be using this little multimeter that we have right here. And we just gotta verify that our leads are connected to our common ground, and then our other lead is connected to our 10 amp side. Just make sure if you're gonna be checking out voltage later on that we're gonna move this lead to our volt setting here. So, I just wanna let y'all know that on this one, I'm gonna be using these alligator clips just to make it a lot easier to hook up right here when we're hooking this up into series. First, that, first what we need to do is loosen up our battery cable. Once we get that, Take this off, set this aside, make sure that they're not touching anymore. And then we're gonna go one end here and the other end over here. I'm gonna let you know our reading is probably gonna be a little bit, a little bit lower because we've been having this on for a while and this is a pretty bad amp draw. So let's go to our 10 amp scale and let's see what we have right here. We got 4.7 amp draw. All right, and dropping still. And what we can do to verify that this is pretty much the same reading as our amp clamp, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and turn on our amp clamp, zero it out, all right, and then hook this up to our battery cable. And let's see what we get. So let's go to the Pico. As you can see right here, we're at 4. Point, about 4.68, 4.7. Let's go to our Pico and see what we have there. Hey, all right, so uh, we're gonna be choosing the winner for this Nicholson pulse sensor. All right, so let's get back to it. Let's see what we gotta do right here. Let's go to our video, and there's my ugly mug right there. And what we need to do is copy this right here. Copy, paste, and then we're gonna put specific text right here is gonna be hashtag Oz giveaway. Let's see how many people actually got into this one. All right, 104 people commented Oz giveaway. And now the moment of truth, who is gonna be our lucky winner on this one? Drum roll please, let me put the screen down. <clears throat> Three, two, one. 
Timothy Chastin. Timothy Chastin. You are the winner of the Nicholson pull sensor right here. I will be sending this Nicholson pull sensor to you. I just need you to comment down below and send me a personal message. And then with that personal message, we can uh, go back and forth and then I can get your information so I can send you this. But just remember, we're going to be giving out this 5 volt reference box right here from Jarhead Diagnostics. Pretty cool little tool right here. And to get this, all you need to do, hashtag Oz giveaway on this video. Hashtag Oz giveaway. And then once we hit, I think it's 47 or 48,000 subscribers, you're going to get this tool right here. But Timothy, good luck on this. And you know what? I got to head out. I got to get to vision. Y'all take care. All right, as you can see right now, we still have it back how it was, 5.1. But as you can see, there's a drop right there. Let's bring this lower to line that up. And look at that. It's about 4.72. So it's right on, it's, it's basically the same, it's showing the same draw from our cheap little multimeter to our snap-on M clamp and our Pico scope. So that's testing it that way. All right, so we have our multimeter hooked up right here. And as you can see, both our leads are just off right here and we have a reading just kind of jumping around. So we're at negative 2.2 millivolts. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and touch these to the back of our fuses. And we're gonna have this right here, which is going to be the little two test leads right there one and two so we're going to be kind of probing that in the back to get a reading and let's see what we get on our first one it's going to jump around first and then if it goes back to there that means that we don't have a voltage drop make sure that we are touching both ends no voltage drop there, none there, nothing there. All right, so right here we're getting 17.7 .7 millivolts on that drop. All right, so we're getting 17.7 .7 millivolts. Let me check that out again. Awesome. Let me show you which fuse that one is. All right, so this is gonna be our 15 amp fuse right here that has the voltage drop. So let's go into our power probe website and we're gonna get the chart and see what that transitions into for our amp draw and see if that correlates with our other test. So let's go to our computer and see what we find out. All right, so this is our power probe website. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna click on this right here and then we're gonna go to our fuse chart once we go to our fuse chart, we're gonna go down. And if I'm not mistaken, this was a mini fuse. And let's wait for this. All right, if we remember, this was a 15 amp fuse right here. And it was 17 millivolts. So right here, this is measurement of millivolts. So we do 17 millivolts. Does this show it here? Man, it actually goes up to 10. So let's do, let's see, so this is where our amp jar would be. We're at 2.1 amps. So that's on 10 millivolts. And then we add 7.7, .7, that's gonna be almost, let's do our math right here, uh, 3.7 of a draw right there so that's using this so 7.7 .7 is going to be uh, 1.6 plus 2.1 and that's our draw coming from our chart that we have right here from our power probe all right so let's see what we can find out see exactly what that fuse is all right so this fuse location right here we got our relays relays and then you have these right there so that's our fuse location 
Now let's go look at a diagram and see which one that one is. All right, so this is gonna be our fuse box. And if we can look at this right here, remember we had our relays, relays, and then our fuses here. And if I'm not mistaken, we're looking at this one right here, which is 17. And if we look down, that's a generator right there. So that's gonna be our alternator. <sighs> All right, let's check this out. Let's see what we get right now. I'm gonna do a visual inspection and see what we find out. All right, after doing a quick visual inspection, this is our alternator right here. As you can see, it looks like it's already been changed out. I was trying to make sure that nothing was going on right here. But after, you know, tracing this harness right here, check what I found out right there. Let me zoom in just a tiny little bit. Yep. And this is actually touching this belt right here. All right, now what I wanna do, I can see some cuts right here. Let me go down, look at that. More issues right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up my multimeter. I'm gonna see if we can agitate it just a little bit and see if we lose our amp draw. So let's put our multimeter into place and uh, I'm gonna kinda just mess around right there and see what we find out. All right. As we can see, we have our amp draw right here. And um, what I'm gonna do is just kind of wiggle this around. Oh, there you go. Right off the bat, that's a big change right there. Let's see if we can create it. All right, so you see I'm touching it there, letting it go. There you go. Repair on this one is just going to be fixing up that wiring harness, rerouting it, making sure that it doesn't go behind the belt. So there you go. Uh, let me know which one is your favorite method in doing this. Like I said, we have our multimeter hooking up to series. We are using our voltage drop test, using the mul another multimeter, and then we have our low amp clamp hooking it up to our battery. So put down below what your favorite method is, and then we'll talk about it see what we can go from there all right if you do like this video please put a big thumbs up and don't forget to hit that little notification bell to get our brand new videos coming out from miles mechanics y'all take care goodbye